It might or might not have been a long time since you thought about dimensioning rules, so just in case, let's take a cruise through the rules that we know. And I'll ask you and you can think about it and then, uh, then I'll give you the answer. So, what's the name of the standard we follow? ASME, why 14.5, and we're now up to year 2018. Okay, what about line weights? Object lines are thick. Center lines are thin. Well, everything is thin. Dimension, hidden lines, those are thin. And thick lines... Oops, sorry. I'll come to that in a minute. Um, hidden lines, they have dashes that are an eighth of an inch long. As me used to say, they must be an eighth of an inch. They've now got some weasel words in their their latest version of the standard, so they say, yeah, do your best. <laughs> Text should be how high? Eighth of an inch high, and arrowheads eighth of an inch long, and in mechanical drawings, the text is always horizontal. Extension lines, uh, 32nd to a 16th, and extent, extension lines extend an eighth of an inch beyond. Oh, you may need to set that up in your title block, come to think of it, so this is probably worth noting. What's wrong with these dimensions? They are crossing. So we avoid that by putting the smallest dimensions closest to the part. How far from the object should the first dimension be? And then, how far apart should subsequent dimensions be? The first one should be 0.4, uh, and here we're translating from metric to inch is why that's an odd number for us. The first dimension should be 0.4 from the object, or around 3 eighths, and subsequent dimensions should be 0.24, or approximately a quarter of an inch. And whatever spacing you make them, make them uniform. These are just minimum distances. They can be farther, but they should be consistent. And watch out for bumps that stick up. Your dimensions have to be 0.4 away from the bumps as well. Now, what about leading zeros? Metric dimensions have leading zeros. Inch dimensions do not. And you'll need to know that when you set up your title block. We have to watch out for duplicate dimensions. There are three of them in this drawing. You might have remembered going through this last year. And there they are. One and a quarter, one and a quarter, one, one, two, two. So we need to get rid of some of those. This part also has a duplicate dimension. How could you fix it? Well, you could remove one dimension or, if you wanted to leave them all there, you could make one of them a reference by putting in parentheses. Here are two views of the same part. It's an L-shaped part with a radius back. Which view should have that thickness dimension? And the answer is, it should be the view on the left, because the rule says we want to dimension a feature in the view where it appears true size and shape. This drawing on the left has a bunch of problems. Uh, it's got dimensioning to hidden lines, and it's got dimensioning features not in the view where they're true size and shape. What's wrong with these? Well, they have dimensions on the part, and we have to keep our dimensions off the part. This question relates to stuff we'll be talking about later in the term again. So you could do baseline dimensioning or chain dimensioning, 
Ordinate is kind of its own thing, so let's just think about baseline and chain. Which one would you prefer? And yes, you are right if you would say baseline because it avoids tolerance stack up. And that's why I say this refers to later in the term when we think more about tolerances. Do you remember what this doodad is? This is a symmetry symbol. Now, which of these is okay? We've got a radius, a diameter, a diameter, diameter. All of them are okay except for the radius. Never, never dimension a circle with a radius. What about the depth of a hole? Which of these is okay? Oh, turns out all of them are okay. Oh, sorry, this is just too much to look at. I should clean this up. We have a bunch of different ways of dimensioning diameters here. I will just tell you that the only one that is wrong is down at the bottom. Using a leader line to point at a surface is not a good way, not a correct way to dimension a diameter. All the others are fine. Pointing at the circular view with a leader using a linear dimension with a diameter sign, those are all fine. And just a reminder, when you have more than one of a thing, you need to be explicit about how many of those things you have. So, for example, if there are two holes that are both half an inch in diameter, you must say two times diameter one-half. Now, Holes on a bolt circle. We have three different ways here. Little short line pointing at the center. Little center marks or long center lines. Which one do you like? Yes, this one on the left with the little short center lines pointing towards the center. The other two are bad. Then with radii and slots, we have to watch out for duplicate dimensions here. If we have a slot with a radius on the end, if you dimension the thickness of the slot, then for the radius you just say R. You need the R to tell them what shape it is, but if you gave them the size of the radius, that would be a duplicate. Okay. Now we're looking at two leaders, this one here and this one here. What's wrong with those? Well, this one on the left is missing its horizontal shoulder. This one on the right is too close to vertical. It needs to be between 15 and 75 degrees so that it doesn't look like a component of the part. Then, counterbores and countersinks. What have we got here? We have counterbores. And which one, it might take you a minute to, to stare at these, which one is not correct? It turns out it's the one in the middle. We don't give the depth first when we're talking about the counterbore. We give the diameter of the counterbore and then we tell them, well, like on the left, we give the diameter of the counterbore, and then we tell them what depth to make it. That's kind of like the order in which you would make this hole. You pick up the uh, 10 millimeter boring tool, and then you bore a hole, and then you make it 3 millimeters deep. Okay, what have we got here? Counterbore or countersink? We've got countersinks. Which one is not correct? Well, it turns out it's this one down here. The standard countersink angles for screws and bolts are 82 degrees or 100 degrees. They're not, um, they're not 90 degrees. And the big deal is we don't give a depth for a countersink. We just tell them the diameter and the angle, and that's it. 
Oh, here's a note about chamfers, just a reminder. What about side views? Which one is correct? The one at the top is not correct. That's bad, even though, yeah, the lines are projected over. The one at the bottom is correct, drawn as if there were two holes 180 degrees apart. How about this section view? Same idea, as if they were 180 degrees apart. How about this section view? We need visible edges. How about this section view? We need to keep it simple and not project everything that you could possibly see. How about these section views? This one catches a lot of people. Remember that we do not show hidden lines in section views. So the one on the left is correct because it does not have hidden lines. And in sections, we do not hatch, um, call it accessory doodads. We don't hatch ribs and gussets and ears and so forth. Just a review of broken out sections. Although most of us are probably going to use the architectural zigzag style, no matter what ASME says. And last slide, enlarged details. We'll come back to these enlarged details a little bit later when you draw your adapter plate, and we'll look at these some more. Okay, there we go. Whirlwind tour.